what's the worst hospital experience you've ever had? Not nearly as bad as the rest of the stories, but when I was 17 I woke up around 2 am with ear pain, and then I felt scratching, it was one of the most uncomfortable feelings ever I didn't know what to do I wanted to rip my fucking ear off. The scratching inside my ear continued for another 40 to 50 minutes until I couldn't take it anymore, so I woke up my mom and told her I had severe ear pain and scratching, so she took me to the hospital. I checked and whatever sat down waiting to be called couple minutes later I get called, and the doctor looks inside my ear, and he fucking tells me there's a cockroach inside my fucking ear. So I'm fucking panicking he leans me over to my side drowns my ear with a shitload of water I'm feeling lightheaded ass who then he proceeds to remove the cockroaches from my ear with some tweezers. Turns out I had two in their worst feeling ever. Medical worker here. At any time, if you feel unsafe during your care. You have every right to leave. Something that royally pisses me off at my hospital. They tell patients their insurance won't cover the bill if you leave AMA. Which is entirely false. More the doctor's office that screwed up than the hospital. But the resulting hospital visit wasn't fun. Went to college health center with classic mono symptoms, didn't find out it was mono until 8 months of symptoms later. They had me take a nap. Then woke me up suddenly, in a dark room. Half an hour after they closed. To inform me that I was being quarantined for meningitis and had to go to the hospital. I didn't want to take a $1,000 ambulance ride. But they refused to let me drive myself or have a friend drive, so my options were either take an ambulance or stay here all night. After three hours in the ER, the doc showed up and got all ready with his gloves, mask, etc. Since I was contagious. Then he took one look, ripped the mask off, and said you look way too healthy to have meningitis. But since they brought it up I have to do a spinal tap anyway. Then he proceeded to stick a needle in my spinal cord while muttering angrily about how foolish of a diagnosis it was. The LDR paid a lot of money and got a needle in my spine because college docs insisted I had meningitis instead of mono. Not me but my ex-boyfriend. He went into the hospital for kidney stones. He has diabetes so it's very common. He has an eye be inserted. I arrive a little while later to keep him company, cause I was a good gf. All of a sudden I see his blood sugar might be high. He's talking funny and acting off. I told him to check his blood sugar. Sure enough it's super high. I went to go get his nurse to get him some insulin. She finally arrives 20 min later. Checks his blood sugar. She confirms it's high. Looks at me and accuses me of giving him sugar. I said there is no way I would do that. I told her to check his IV drip that maybe someone gave him a regular bag and not one that has no sugar. She balks at that and walks away to get some insulin. After an hour of his blood sugar not coming down, I demanded that they give him another IV drip. Sure enough the bag was for non-diabetes people. A stupid nurse replaced the bag and his blood sugar came down. That nurse didn't look or talk to me the rest of the time he was admitted to that hospital and I gave an official complaint to the hospital. I went into a minor surgery to remove a lip cyst and woke up eight days later with my right leg amputated above the knee. Bad reaction to anesthesia caused heart failure. I was 23 at the time and 24 now. I'm one of those people with chronic bad luck. If you're interested in photos of my coma and amputation plus my progress and recovery message me. I'm not sure if self-promoting is against the rules of the sub, so I won't share my info on this comment. 1. After having my colon, a nus, and rectum removed due to severe Crohn's disease I ended up with a permanent illicotomy. Second night in the hospital post-op. I'm 23. Never have I changed a bag or had a stoma. On lots of opiates. My bag leaks. I push button for a nurse. The nurse degraded me. Blamed me for the leak and told me I should have noticed it and changed it before it leaked, which I now know is not always possible. Who yells at a kid who just had major surgery and now has a permanent ostomy. 2. After my last surgery in May, bowel resection, I developed an ileus, bowels not moving. Opiates are not good for this, so I went off them. Okay fine, I don't like opiates anyway and really wanted to get out of the hospital. A few days later developed an obstruction. Middle of the night at a teaching hospital. I have a no opiate order from the ileus. On call resident comes in and gives me one Tylenol by mouth which I subsequently projectile vomited. Refused to call my actual surgeon. Spent 2 am 6 am in agony. Surgeon arrived. She got immediately pissed and personally gave me an injection of opiates. I got a call from my mother that my sister had been taken out of her apartment in an ambulance because she was in so much pain she couldn't walk I lived about 40 minutes away, but I was the closest, so I went running. She's in crazy pain, but they're basically ignoring her. Not appendicitis based on the initial exam, but in that general area. 
they're giving her the good drugs and asking her constantly if she's on her period or pregnant, but do nothing else to actually check on her. Eventually, hours later, we're taken into an exam room that fully isn't cleaned, they put a puppy pad over some blood on the step up to the chair, and they do an internal sonogram on her, and say honey you need to pee, there's something in the way she does, and they still say well something is in the way, but it's so big, that we know it couldn't be torsion which is what we're worried about take some drugs, and go home it's probably just cramps or a cyst that burst. Nothing to do. She goes to her gyno in the morning and is then rushed into surgery at a different, better, hospital. She had a grapefruit-sized dermoid on her ovary, that did in fact cause ovarian torsion, and she lost her ovary as a result. I was 16 and I had horrible stomach pains for about a week and just chalked it up to the flu going around school, but it didn't go away it continued for another week and I lost about 12 pounds and started throwing up after almost every meal my dad was efficiently freaked and took me to the ER and the doctor was convinced I was pregnant. She kept badgering me about even though I repeatedly said there was absolutely no way I could be pregnant unless I was the second coming of the Virgin Mary. I was on the verge of tears when she went so far as to tell my dad to leave the room so I could admit the truth she finally made me pee in a cup and surprise, no baby. Then after just pushing really hard on my stomach and asking me if it hurt she said it must be my kidneys and wanted to start me on meds but warned that if it wasn't actually my kidneys that the medication could cause serious damage. It was at this point my usually very calm and reasonable dad completely lost his mind and asked the woman if she had actually gone to med school and pulled me out of there. We went to another hospital where I found out I needed an appendectomy immediately. Screw that dumb bitch not every teen girl with stomach pains is pregnant. The morning the doctors told my wife and I there was nothing more they could do to treat her cancer. That she might have 2-4 months to live. We held each other for a few minutes, then I retreated to a quiet corner of the hospital so she didn't have to witness me sobbing as I made the necessary phone calls. Truly, that day was much worse than the day she actually passed away. I used to work in a shock trauma unit, contracted employee in the registration area. They had a room they'd take the families to. The screams of the parents' friend's family who just lost a loved one. Sucked, heard it multiple times a week. Had a surgery on my stomach area. Couldn't do keyhole due to complications so opened me up the old-fashioned way. Go to the ward for recovery. I'm given a self-deliverable morphine machine for the pain. Push the button, and after time it gets to empty. Machine beeps. Nurse comes over to inspect it and declares she can't work or what's wrong. As you can see the cartridge inside go down and it's clearly not working anymore I tell her it's empty. She tells me it's not, and I don't know anything. Okay maybe I'm wrong. Beeps for hours until she gets a colleague who promptly tells her it's empty. Finally it's changed over doctor comes to review my case. Machine tells him how much of the medicine has been delivered and says I clearly don't need help anymore due to the fact I haven't self-delivered any medication recently. Sends me home in absolute agony despite another nurse trying to correct the problem. Went home and just sobbed for two weeks in complete agony. Also that nurse almost had a dementia patient strangle herself with some clear tubing because she thought it was a fun straw, then proceeded to scream at her in surround sound for the whole war to hear. Nice D. Not a hospital, but a dental office I was like 13. Had to get four fillings. They drilled and scraped and fucked me up good. It hurt so badly I was sweating. I gripped that chair so hard my nails put little dents in it. Never cried, dad wanted me to be tough. I thought well, this is why nobody likes going to the dentist. It's actual fucking torture. Afterwards I said well that was really painful or something along those lines. The stupid fucking nurses reply don't be a baby, we gave you three shots of anesthetic for each tooth, they did not. I was too young to know that was part of the procedure, and they fucking forgot. Dot. Told this story before but a. Eh. It's small injustice that I still feel like shouting to the rooftops. Basically I was in hospital with a broken tear duct and cellulitis behind my eye. It was indescribably painful. I'd been in hospital a week when a nurse gave me an IV that hurt a lot. After she did it, I moved my arm and screamed. She was like aha. Uh -huh. That's normal. 99% of the nurses I had were wonderful. This woman was fucking terrible. I had been poked and prodded and jabbed with things for a week. Anyone who's had cellulitis, let alone behind their eye, knows how painful it is. I was no stranger to pain. So when I called her in. Literally crying from pain over the IV she should have known I wasn't just being a wuss anyway. The next morning my eye started gushing blood. I was rushed into surgery and given a relaxant by the anesthesiologist and 10 minutes later as they were prepping me I was like uh. Should I be feeling sleepy yet? And there was a sudden wave of activity. The surgeon grabbed my arm, I screamed eye pain and within two seconds he was like idiots. The cannula is in her muscle tissue. I had it in for 13 hours all up which I'm told is crazy because it's notoriously painful. 
it also meant that I'd gone hours without antibiotics, which is probably why my eye started bleeding. It was nothing to keep the infection at bay. The LDR had burst tear duct and cellulitis behind my eye. Nurse gave me IV which hurt a lot. Pleaded with the nurse that something was wrong. She dismissed me. Added in for 13 hours before surgeon realized it was stuck in my muscle tissue. Ouchie. I was in a car accident. And T-boned by someone going 65 mph. My hand was caught in between the collapsing car and the steering wheel. When I popped my hand out, I felt the bone break and it hurt like hell. Amazingly enough. I had no other injuries. But the EMTs were taking no chances. And thinking I was in shock. They strapped me onto a backboard and hauled me off to the ER. While in the ER. I was asked several times if I was injured anywhere, and I repeatedly said my hand is broken, it hurts real bad. ETW, this backboard is hurting the hell out of the back of my head, can I get off of it, please? Also. Can you please call my mother? Fee I was 19 two hours later. I was still on the backboard, and I had lost count of how many people had asked me where my injuries were and me repeating my left hand is broken. But that was when I was finally taken down to the x-ray department. There, they x-rayed every bone in my body. But my left hand. I am wheeled back to the ER. Still on that goddamn backboard. By this time, I have a horrendous headache from where my head is resting on that 2x4, and I sit for another couple of hours. During that time I was able to talk a nurse into bringing me a bedpan so I could relieve myself, and that is when the cop came in, opened the curtains so everyone could see me and give me a ticket. Finally, after having been in the ER for six hours, I finally talked someone into calling my mother to come pick me up. The doctor had finally said I could get off of the backboard, and when my mom got there, I'm not sure how many traffic laws she broke to get there as fast as she did, he let me know I had no injuries. Yes. I do. My hand is broken. Young lady. I'm the doctor. I tell you when your hand is broken. That was when I grabbed my ring finger on my left hand and pulled it out, and the break became visible through the skin. My hand is fucking broken. Mom. Being an attorney. Dust looked at the doctor and said does the word malpractice mean anything to you back down to the x-ray department I went, and lo and behold, my damn hand was broken, but the doctor was all, how it was well hidden, and that's why they missed it the first time, no, asshole, you missed it the first time because no one x-rayed it. A couple of days later when I went to an ortho doctor to get my hand rebroken and the bone set, oh oh, I pulled out the x-ray to take a look to see the break and how hidden it really was. God damn if you couldn't see that break right there in the middle of the bone plain as day. It's 20 plus years later, the bone never did set correctly. And I'm starting to get arthritis in it. I can tell you when the weather is going to change based on how badly my hand is hurting. I fell over on a night out. Not drunk, and hit my head. Only six months before I'd had brain surgery for a tumor. Scooped up by an ambulance. Dumped in A&D, &E, treated like a drunk student. My friends kept telling them that I wasn't drunk, I'd had surgery etc. But they left me in a corridor and ignored me. After three or four hours on a bed in a corridor with no attention, I decided I was fine and checked myself out. It was ridiculous. I felt a bit woozy, but recovered fully the next day. They should have taken me a bit more seriously. Not treated me like a drunk, just because it happened on a Saturday night. My wife had surgery. She was in the or for about three hours, and the nurse comes to me and says the doctor would like to talk to you and drops me in another room. I'm like oh fuck she died on the table. And I'm shitting myself. They left me in the room for an hour with nobody coming to see me. In that hour I went though terror, grief, denial and every other awful emotion. Finally after an hour they wheel my wife in on a gurney and I am fucking relieved and ecstatic. What the fuck kind of bedside manner is that I wish I could say that was the worst of it, but it got worse. My wife is still obviously under the effects of the anesthesia and they ask her if she's in pain. Yes bang. They hit her with fentanyl or some other opiate. Every 20 minutes pain. My wife is saying yes. And even I'm at this point like hey it's obvious she's not at her full mental capacity please stop doping her up. Then they put us in a room for recovery. It was a large room with about 20 beds with curtains. After 3 or 4 hours they are asking us to get dressed and get ready to leave. My wife is still barely conscious. What the fuck? So they ask me to dress my wife and put her in a chair. I am doing my best to dress my incoherent wife and the curtain is flying open and the whole room sees my wife partially dressed. I finally flag down a nurse to help us, and she gets my wife dressed and sits her in a chair. My wife at this point is like yeah I'm really out of it do you think I could stay a little while longer? No. They put my wife in a wheelchair and ask me to pull the car around front. So I do. I pull up outside. No wife or nurse who took her down were outside waiting, nobody. So I go into the lobby and find my wife pushed into a corner by a plant. No nurse or orderly with her. 
My wife was still only mildly coherent. What the actual fuck? Someone literally could have stolen my wife and she wouldn't have been able to react to it. I managed to basically carry my wife into the back seat of my car, lay her down, and strap her into all three seatbelts. I drove home slowly. That said her surgery was successful, so the doctors must have been good, but that hospital was a piece of shit otherwise. Edit. Words. I had a kidney stone. They sent me home with ibuprofen. I went to my urologist two days later and he was so livid at the hospital that he made them open up their imaging center two hours early on a Saturday so I could get in there and get checked out. Dang fever in a public hospital in a country that is very severely underdeveloped. I woke up from massive amounts of brain swelling. IVs in my arms and without a clue as to where I was or what had happened. The rooms were nowhere near private and there were around 20 to 25 other patients around me. Many worse off than me. I saw several die. The fellow directly beside me was in for some psychiatric issue and was chained to his bed and spent the day screaming at the top of his lungs whilst covered in feces. To the other side of me was a poor little kid who had recently lost a leg and was still bleeding quite a bit from his stump off and on. There was a toilet at least for all of us. But no sink to wash your hands. When I finally had the strength to get out of there. I felt as if I had been liberated from hell itself.